Hello and welcome to Pro Trader Strategies Market Commentary for Monday, July the 15th. My name is Eric Wilkinson. Yeah, you may recognize me as the Wolfman from CNBC, Fox Business, or maybe even the Wall Street Journal. I'm here to teach you guys some different option strategies you can implement into your portfolios, but please do that in your own way. Also remember, past performance of any trading system or methodology is not necessarily indicative of future results. All right, having that out of the way, we usually get it on with some economic data. Uh, not really a whole lot to see because it is a Monday, but we did get Empire Manufacturing uh, come in, coming in at 4.3%, expected to be a 1.6%. Now remember, last month's number on the Empire Manufacturing was the first time we've seen a negative reading since uh, the better part of probably all the way back to 2017. I think it was like May of 2017. Or so so almost a year at, uh, or sorry two years at least there on that economic data point being negative but yet last month's number was a big eye-opener that there may be some chinks in the armor here in the United States as the rest of the economies globally are starting to see some slowdown we haven't really seen that here in the United States but that was one of the first indications nice to see that number coming out again positive uh, for U.S. economy um, indications anyway, for back of, lack of anything else to say there, I guess. All right, we've got crude oil in the 60s. Right now, even though they're off by a couple of pennies, seems like we are getting a bit of a flag. You know, a lot of times when we get this kind of market set up in the charts, it could go really either way, to be quite honest. And what I'm talking about here is when we get a, a setup where you get the big move like this and now we start seeing this market trend down a little bit. Now that's usually like a, an indication that we are getting ready for another big move like that. Uh, you can kind of see similar situation where you kind of get that move down and then the big pop up. That's what it feels like we're kind of seeing here. Again, flag down like that, trend down, and then you get that pop there. So that's feeling like what we're starting to see here. Again, you know, uh, one could also say that, you know, we're creating a bit of more, let me change my marker there, bit more of a topping pattern here and, you know, confirmation to the downside. Uh, if we got a red bar today where it looked more like that, it would look more of a top. But when you get this tight wind up, remember we talked about this with the rubber band, when you get a rubber band kind of winding up, you know, and it's kind of doing that. The tighter you wind up that rubber band, the more energy is uh, captured in that. Then once that rubber band's let go, we snap. Well, that's the type of setup we're seeing here with that rubber band winding up, but now we're seeing it kind of trend down and one may expect this to pop to the upside again on crude oil. So I don't wanna see that right now, especially with the, the economy in flux. So we would like to see some of that money go towards something else, the velocity of money I've talked about so many times before. All right, uh, we've got gold futures also doing a similar, you know, I mentioned flag on the other one, but it's not really a flag, but we've kind of got somewhat of a flagging going on here in gold futures. Now, anytime we break above or below these types of setups that starts to look like we're um you know building up that energy again it could go in either direction though with gold at this point in the 14 handles i don't know how long we can sustain it a lot of people are talking about gold 2000 but anytime we start really seeing those big rallies in gold everybody talks about the all-time historical highs that it's going to go to and 2000 always seems to be the number that everybody comes up with I don't know that we're gonna see that. I don't think that the economy is going to get to a point where we really see that. Yes, China is saying they're gonna hold off on precious metals uh, coming out of their country, but I don't know that that's really going to drive our markets that much higher. All right, bonds trying to make a bit of a rebound now that we bounced off that 153 area, which lined up with the Fibonacci, uh, the 50% Fibonacci extension. We've rallied up, tested that 78 Fibonacci extension. Now we're right back down to the 50. A lot of people will look at this as a location to start buying. Anytime you get a 50 Fibonacci retracement, that's one of the first places. Another place would be to look at the 38 or the 62, depending on how you set up your charts, uh, or the 61, I guess. But 
those are also where the market has a tendency to feel like we've gotten a little overextended. It seems like we found that support here at the 50, at least at this point, maybe rally up to uh, the 154.22 area, which lines up with this Fibonacci as well, the 61. So we've gotten this bounce down to the 50. Some people will look to start buying down here at around the 38, but a lot of times the first place to come in and start finding some value is here uh, for that bounce to the upside. I think that might be what people are looking for in bonds, but I, you know, bonds, I don't think that we're really gonna lower interest rates, especially with good economic data coming out. You know, we are really ramping up right into the earnings season, so that's also gonna have a big play in this. How the Fed will look at the companies and how they are doing. That is a great determining factor as to where the economy is right now, not necessarily going forward. PMI is going to kind of do that for us. But right now, it will give us a good snapshot as to what the economies, uh, what our economy has been doing recently. All right, the VIX trying to move higher back into the teens, hopefully cross our fingers. That's what we're trying to get at with the equities still moving higher, that's going to be a place. Anytime we start pressing on these highs, a lot of people will start getting nervous, start buying some puts, right, as protection uh, in case there's a correction, trying to protect their upside. Well, you know, you've, if you've watched my videos, you know that when you're buying protection on a long uh, stock, it is kind of like throwing good money at bad money um, when you're doing that. Because if I bought XYZ stock at 100 and then I pay two dollars for some puts well i've increased my cost basis by two dollars by doing that right so i have to make up two dollars to the upside in order to pay for those puts yes if the market corrects then i've i've saved myself some angst by having that insurance on there but one thing people most often forget about is the fact that when you're buying options around that underlying, you are increasing your basis, what you paid for it every single time. So if you do that every single month, you're increasing the cost basis on your underlying quite dramatically, all right? And I talk about different ways to uh, stay away from that type of pitfall in your trading. So check out my webinars at protraderstrategies.com because that will save you a lot of angst. You may be thinking you're doing the right thing, but know that you are increasing what you paid for that underlying by doing that. All right, anyway, Dow Jones slightly in positive territory, albeit we are off the highs that we saw on the open. NASDAQ up almost 17, 18 points, again, making new highs here at 170, or at 79.86, 75, 79.87, we could almost say. There's no Fibonacci lining up with that. Uh, it's just basically mar markets trudging higher. We've got the E-mini S&Ps up two points. Now we talked about on Friday, we made a overnight high that was probably gonna need to be printed during the day session. Well, lo and behold, we printed that high, but it was in an overnight session. So yet we have another overnight high that needs to be printed during the day. Not a whole lot of attempt to try and do that right off the open, as a matter of fact, it seemed like the mantra was just flush out any longs that had come in overnight getting long. So overnight inventory very long coming into the day, day session tried to flush those out. Now, whether or not we go up and try and make those prints happen during the day session is something to be seen. But at this point, it doesn't look like we have the momentum to really rally up there and print those highs during the day session. Uh, right now. And that's about it. There's a couple of other things I'm looking at. I'm still trying to get out of a couple of uh, trades that I put on GDXJ. I've got an order to put uh, to get out. ABT was looking really good for a while. <clears throat> Let's see if I can pull up an ABT chart. Today we were going down to look like test Friday's lows there. We're starting to get a move a little bit higher it's still in negative territory but i think if i can get down to these lows i'm going to be pretty close to being able to cover my abt for a double which means i you know paid a uh, dollar 40 i'm trying to get out or a dollar 20 ish and i'm trying to get out for two dollars and 40 cents actually yeah dollar 20 and i'm trying to get out for two dollars and 48 cents right now so um a little bit higher than 50 percent or double 
uh, on that trade, but the market was looking a little bit more bearish when I put that in this morning. And then GDXJ, I'm hoping we'll start to roll over with that gold. And that's about it. I'm uh, holding off on everything else because like I mentioned, we are heading into the earnings season. Banks first off and we got City overnight. They basically came in line. They're not seeing a whole lot of move. I probably wouldn't have traded City anyway, but I am going to be looking at Goldman, uh, ticker symbol GS and uh, JP Morgan both have their earnings today. So I'm going to be looking at those trades and uh, try and put something on for that today. I don't really have a directional assumption at this part point. I haven't done a whole lot of market research on these, um, but I am most likely at this juncture, my feeling is that I'm gonna be looking at some kind of a strangle or something like that around this, maybe an iron condor uh, to create some defined risk, but that's where I'm gonna be starting out with my trades on these bank stocks at this point. And that's all I got. Uh, check out myself on Twitter at Wolfman's blog, because I will be tweeting out what I uh, what trades I put on. I'm just going to tell you what the strategy is, whether it's a strangle, uh, you know, short puts or something like that. You're going to need to know the strike location, uh, which will be according to my rules that I set up for these earnings trades. So check those out if you haven't done that yet, uh, because my rules are a little bit different for an earnings event than it is for just a regular trade. So um, find out that stuff at Pro Trader Strategies, because we're heading into the earnings season. I'm going to be talking a lot about these rules and the trades that I set up according to those rules. So uh, if you can't take that, take it easy.